Hey guys, how's it going? Kyle here again. It's been a while for uh, my personal uh, aquarium, and so uh, I got a new toy though. And a new toy meaning that uh, this is just a new piece of equipment. Uh, plus, we have a couple of uh, maintenance things and things that we need to talk about uh, just for knowing what's going on, what I have plans for. Uh, so, anyways, this first thing here. I'm really excited about um, and it is you might be able to see it's a UV uh, UV unit so what I'm gonna do here is pull the boxes or excuse me pull the packing out and open the box where I can just quickly open it and then I'll uh, we'll, we'll take a look inside we're gonna talk about some of the UV stuff, uh, like why on earth now have I decided to do this. Um, we'll chat about that, cool. All right, so this is the Vectron 2 600 uh, UV uh, you know, ultraviolet sterilizer. Um, I picked it because of its size and then also the price was just really good uh, considering what it is that you get and uh, they just, I, of all the research I had done on uh, on UV and like, you know, I'm not expecting it to be a give all, do all, 100%, you know, a perfect, like, oh, it fixes everything. That's not the case. If you're looking for that, that's not, you're not going to find said thing. I mean, there's just no such thing. That said though, uh, what I do find is that this these people have done probably the most public research that I've ever seen uh, dealing with with UV and kind of how it how it works how to achieve you know what you want to achieve with it so I figured you know what it's probably worth uh, it's probably worth investing in them and their company uh, they do pond UV they do uh, and, and have some of the largest pond UV uh, sterilizers there are. So I just figured, you know what, I, I, it's worth it to me to kind of step into the next level of, uh, of aquarium keeping. And then I was watching other things like, I mean, okay, so I, I'm not too big on fish only, like tanked stuff, ATM, uh, which I'm sure they're great. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm almost positive that they are great uh, tank makers, but I... I just, you know, for, it, it, it's, I want a reef. I want to have the uh, ability to have a reef uh, tank. So that, with that said, they always, always, always have massive UV units on their, uh, on their aquariums. So I realized, you know what, let's do some research. So I kind of went in and did some research, looked around. And uh, so they've got some awesome fittings here. It looks good. Uh, I'm going to, my phone apparently has decided it's going to start dying uh, at like 5% battery, so uh, I'm going to switch to my iPad. Yeah, okay, I'll be right back. Alright, so I went ahead and bought a pair of extra of the uh, uh, 90 degree elbows, so they came here as well. Um, and I didn't even realize that it came with one, so I have an extra that means the next time. I, what I'm thinking about doing, here's kind of what I'm planning on doing. I want to start with one of these. It should easily get me to level one uh, sterilization. Uh, and then what I should be able to do is put a second one in line and uh, use one of my gate valves on the manifold. And that will get me actually to level two sterilization, uh, which is kind of what I'm hoping to get to. Um, so I think that that's the plan. So I'm probably going to buy another one of these. They're, I mean, $160, $170 um, is the cost. It, it's why not? Like, I mean, that is about the the most inexpensive uh, unit. It's about 20 inches long. It should fit perfectly uh, here. I'm thinking about uh, mounting it vertically. I, it, it recommends to mount horizontally. Uh, we'll see. I, I, if I have the space, I'll, I'll do it horizontally, but I'm not 100% sure. So uh, what I'm going to do, and I had to buy additionally for the manifold, I had to buy uh, this guy. So this is a, a slip or a street. It just will, will get glued in and then has a half inch tube here. I opted to go half inch because my manifold uh, is a half inch, so this makes sense. 
Um, and then uh, I'll put a black vinyl tube on this and cinch it down with a clamp, hose clamp. And that way I can dial in exactly how much uh, volume to go through here. And I think that will do just nicely. Probably, probably need to buy a second one of these uh, for my GFO and carbon reactor, uh, which I have purchased from BRS. Uh, you know, I realized I did that completely out of order. And so I am correcting that right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, installed and uh, they recommend to take it apart and kind of put it together, get yourself familiar with it before you try to mount it or anything. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get it installed. So that's, it'll be good. All right, so I was going to put it, uh, I was gonna take this surge protector out and put it uh, in between here. There's a two by four here and a two by four here. Uh, that I used to reinforce. Uh, <laughs> they make it to where this is exactly 20 inches or 20 and a half inches and the uh, the box, well the, the dimensions from them say it's 20 inches so I'm like oh you know no big deal. Uh, it's actually closer to 21 so it doesn't fit uh, horizontally the way I'd like it to so I'm gonna have to turn it on its side. I'll probably still end up moving this just not right now but I'll have it on its side back over here and then I'll put the next one on that side uh, right here uh, in the time, when the time comes. So uh, that's just kind of what we get to do, how we get to do it. So I'm just going to get to it. I'm going to drill some pilot holes. Uh, the way that this thing is designed is with it taken apart. I actually took the bulb out. It's right over there. Um, so there's no bulb in here right now. I took apart what you're supposed to do. They want you to know how to do it. You can see the sapphire, uh, maybe. There it is. You can see the O-ring with the sapphire glass on the inside. This unscrews right here, obviously. Um, so, but this will all come out. So you can take this part of the housing off completely. And now you just have basically the plastic, uh, the plastic outside, which has a hole up here, there for. Uh, screwing into and then one down here as well now uh, if you can see uh, yeah. yeah I was gonna say it's that's not actually a small hole like this is a there look like there's a piece of hole right here that's not a hole you have to use this these slide holes uh, which is fine I would just make sure to put the screw in and then um, it does not want to focus on this thing it's crazy there we go put the screw in and make sure to tighten it down right there uh, on on it uh, with it hanging out like this uh, so it enters from the bottom here and then gets pushed out the top over here and then the next one will come down here enter the bottom and then come out the top uh, when I get the second one in line so uh, that's what I'm going to do and then uh, I'm going to screw the holes get them piloted and in place and then I will go ahead and fix this to the wall then I will put this into the slot slides if you will and uh, it would be good so perfect all right all right that was relatively easy uh, just put a pin mark where I needed the uh, screw up there screwed the screw in and then uh, it kind of hung it from that point right there and then uh, moved the pin to where I needed it down here did the same thing it was a little bit more tricky to get the drill in here but then uh, drilled the screw into this mark here and then I uh, got it to where they're both like I mean if I'm pulling on it they don't want to get 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 loose or give away so uh, that's that's pretty secure and tight so now what I need to do is just get the uh, uh, whatever the housing in here as well make sure that I put the tube in and, and put it in well like you know mark, mark it up the way it needs to be um, this is screwed on. I think I'm going to just go ahead and put a little bit of Teflon tape uh, on here. They say to consider doing that. Uh, even though I've cranked down on it pretty hard, I'm probably going to go ahead and just do it. Why not? I'd rather be uh, more safe than sorry. So this will kind of go like this. I might even just actually yeah, do that to where it's vertical. And that way, uh, yeah, it's just straight up and down and, you know, goes flush against the side over there. I checked and it's it's pretty darn close. I mean, it's it's good with what I need it to be. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape around that Teflon tape, 
and uh, then I'll get this thing situated. Now they include this, it's a little, it just in the event that there's some water that splashes through or gets through the uh, O-ring here, it keeps it away from the electronics. So uh, it's a little flap that goes there. Um, everything else is, I mean, it's pretty solidly built. You can see through very well. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. We'll see. All right, so we have plumbed this 90 in and have it running around the back up there. And it goes straight down and hits the input here, which will then flow up and then ex uh, exit the unit here. And I have it running up and across the manifold at the top, and it will dump back down into that far back, uh, yeah, far back hole where I'm going to have everything else, which I haven't showed you. I actually cut a couple more pieces of uh, poly uh, carbonate, and I'm actually going to build uh, a new exit system. Everything is going to be dumping into the far hole over here, and then uh, will come across and empty into these two, gosh, I can't even make it. There you go. Those two uh, holes. But So water will come above and go down the holes into the filter socks. So we're basically going to have both of those holes that one and that one have filter socks and so there will be a bit dam or barrier that goes the length of this to keep the water up on the shelf and then they will all fold and filter through there. Uh, that will knock pretty much all of my bubble issues down and out uh, and then also give me a super quick and easy way to mechanically filter uh, plus have all the stuff, all the drains go into that which will be a uh, bubble, you know, basically the, the drain the water will hit down bubble up and then you know sp spill into these ones so uh yeah so anyways all i have to do now is open this gate and or this gate uh which i'll probably just go ahead and do both uh that will flood this area now all of these are checked are closed closed and that is even closed and then uh what i'm going to do though is i'm going to turn my prime off and cover it just in case some water tries to drip out of here uh and if it does We'll address that when it comes, but uh, then I'll turn this on. I'll plug this in and turn it on. And uh, you're never supposed to run it without uh, water in it, so I definitely want to make sure that water's running. Uh, I have a couple of my two gallon buckets here, and so I'll be able to get my flow set. I'm going to get as close to level two as I possibly can. It's a 25 watt bowl. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and open these up. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to unfortunately shut the phone off while I do this in the event that there's an emergency. I want both hands to be able to ah, take care of it, so sorry you don't get to watch it, but uh, just know that I'm opening this gate, that gate, and uh, having a cover here to make sure that we're, uh, this is flooded, but nothing's coming out of these three. Then, as long as nothing's coming out, I'll open this up and start. Uh, if nothing's coming out, I'll come right back, so I'll be right back, hopefully. All right, so... Uh, we are open. The only kind of only drops that we had was actually out of the gate area of this. Whenever I opened and closed it, I had to do it a couple times, and now uh, it was literally a drop when I opened it, and then uh, I closed it again, and I opened it again, and it did the exact same thing a second time. And I was like, okay, so basically, if you just leave it open or leave it closed, it doesn't. I mean, it was only like in the movement of when I was turning the gate, so. And nothing showed up in that one. Uh, the rest of them, all of these are closed off perfectly good. Uh, so we have water going through it now and I don't see uh, no leaks anywhere, no drops, drips. Uh, I'll put some paper towel down here uh, just to verify it um, and make sure that uh, it's doing what I want it to do. Uh, so I have it uh, barely open here on this gate it's kind of going up and around. You can even see kind of where the water level is. Uh, like that's that little spot right there is water level, that horizontal piece. Um, and so, uh, and then you can see it hit back here. It's going down here. here. So uh, I'm pretty happy. Again, I don't see any kind of leaks or anything like that. Uh, that's full of water there, which is good. Again, this is this enforces that the dwell time is full, like because I had to go run up, like that chamber is completely full. So um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. 
So now, and then I have this guy over here, and it's just uh, trickling at the moment, which I will do the math and calculations and figure out exactly how long I need, or how much, uh, how much I need. So I've got a 12, or excuse me, a two gallon bucket here. I don't believe this is two gallons. I had to say that. I'm going to check. Uh, you know, doesn't actually tell me. I think I could get two milk jugs under this. Actually, it might be a gallon and a half. I don't really know. Well, we'll see. I'm going to assume it's a two gallon jug. I'm pretty sure it's a two gallon jug. Um, so, uh, and basically what I'll do is divide by, you know, I'll fill this up and, add, you know, figure out how long it takes to fill this up. And then uh, divide it by 30 rather than 60 or 60 divided by however long this is. I can put the equation in the comments. That's a smarter thing to do. So, But everything is plumbed in and good, so once I figure out the, uh, the flow, I'll turn it on and we'll see light. So I'll do that real quick. Alrighty, we are dialed in and looking good. So, and I also have some paper towels here just to verify in the morning I'll check and make sure that they are completely dry still, that there are no leaks. Uh, I've only seen one minute drip came from right there, and so I, I cranked that one, the one that's right here, not this one, but that one, uh, down a little bit harder and uh, it went away. Uh, repositioned the direction to make sure that it was going the way I wanted it to be going. Uh, so I've been, I went ahead and dialed in uh, the, uh, the flow a little bit more with my gate valve here and basically uh, I took my, it is, a, it is a two gallon bucket, so I took my two gallon bucket and uh, put the hose into the two gallon bucket and basically I wanted 12 gallons per hour to be, because that's, I want to start as close to level two uh, as I can and at knowing that so basically, I'll have the dwell time here. Um, hopefully, I I'm just going to go on the principle that I'll be able to keep up. Like, it, it will keep itself up as long as those parasites, uh, parasites, bacteria, stuff like that, like the free floating, floating algae and those types of things. I'd rather keep to the level 2 flow speed. That way, even whenever I get the second, I want to get a second 25 watt uh, in time. It might not be this year. It might be next year. Uh, but that way, uh, that way I can put uh, put that on and I don't even have to do anything so but you can see the UVs on and running uh, and so I feel basically the, the math is I wanted 12 gallons per hour that's the the high end of what's considered level two uh, filtration or, or sterilization so level two 25 watts uh, 12 gallons per hour and you want that to, to turn over at least three times so we're not going to make the turnover rate technically, uh, so that's kind of where the uh, I need the the more wattage to where I can get the higher gallons per hour to go through there. So, uh, but anyways, uh, right now it's 25 gallons per watt, or excuse me, 25 watts. We want uh, shoot. Now you see you're going to make me double guess myself. Try to second guess myself. Uh, 12 gallons per hour. Per watt, that's what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to retune all this. Now you, you've got me in my head because it is tuned to what is 12 gallons per hour right now, which is way too slow. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm gonna go look at the math. We're gonna figure it out. But just know that everything's working, and I'll get it dialed into the way it's supposed to be. Uh, so, anyways, well, thank you for your contribution to my figuring out that hey, I've, I've got this way too slow, and tomorrow I'd have been really confused. Why? Why is it not tomorrow? But next week, why isn't any of this working? So. Uh, we're good. Awesome. Thanks guys for coming along and I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, again, this is the Vectron 600. It's a V2 Vectron 600. Uh, that's the, the model. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the quality of the build uh, and uh, it arrived in great shape, uh, packaged well, so I, I couldn't be happier. So we'll see. We'll see how it uh, performs and then I'll uh, kind of review that once the time comes. But anyways, uh, the fish, the fish are happy. <laughs> so, alright, have a good day, evening, whatever it is for you.